Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us from all four corners of the globe, as much of an oxymoron as that is. It's wonderful to have you all here. Tonight's talk is going to be called, We Vow to Help Them All. And the emphasis is on help and the word all, both of which I hope to discuss this evening. From whatever fortunate turn of events in our lives we've encountered, the Buddha Dharma, maybe we were born into a family, into a culture, community, where there were practitioners and we were raised from a young age, or perhaps we encountered it later in life, as is the case with many Westerners. But I'd like to consider myself a very rich person for having encountered this Buddha Dharma especially at this point in history where there's so much so many resources available whether it's in print or translation into my native tongue english or just the resources that are available online it's amazing and such a wonderful opportunity for us to explore so many of the different um vines that are that are, are branches of this buddhist tree mahayana buddhism which then is a school of emphasizes the bodhisattva's vow which is what we begin each meditation session with and it begins sentient beings are numberless we vow to help them all now, this is an unorthodox translation, I'll admit, one that I took liberties myself, rendering, not from Sanskrit or from Chinese, but rather from English to English. Because I'm often, I often am made to uh, feel uncomfortable with the word that normally sits inside of the sentence, which is we vow to save them all. It's a difficult question. I mean, it's a difficult uh it's a tall order when we say we're going to save somebody. We'll save them from what and with what. Other spiritual practices make quite a bit big deal about saving people. And I think that this might be a misunderstanding of what Buddhism is fundamentally about. <clears throat> there are a variety of words that refer to the Buddha's awakening experience. Enlightenment, which I think is a bit of a sloppy one. Realization, awakening, liberation. Liberation being the one that's the closest to, state, to, to the word saving. But we have to ask ourselves, what, is, what are we being saved from? Well, the three poisons in Buddhism are, are seen as greed, hatred, and ignorance the first two are pretty self-evident being greedy makes us unhappy makes us crave and it makes us make the world a living hell for others hatred obviously is very similar in that we point all of our anger outwards or sometimes there's self-hatred but we point it towards an object and we make that object miserable perhaps in the same way as Greed can indirectly do that. But what is this ignorance? Ignorance of what? Buddhism emphasizes the empirical world around us, studying it and realizing that nothing that we ever encounter lasts for very long. Nothing is permanent. Nothing can give us any, therefore, nothing can give us any sort of lasting satisfaction. We can get satisfaction. It just won't last very long. And that's fine, so long as we're realistic about it. As long as we don't expect something, an experience, an event, um, a job promotion, praise, what have you, to give us any sort of lasting happiness. And the last mark that the Buddha identified was that all things are without self. No matter where we search inside of our experience, we're never going to be able to pinpoint anything that we can 
concretely identify as me, I, me, or mine. And it's that important, very uh, fundamental teaching in Buddhism that is of the utmost importance. We start with the word we vow to help them all in the four great vows. This is not I. This is not my personal project to fix other people and to get as many people interested in Buddhism or converted to Buddhism or so-called enlightenment. This is we. We could be the Sangha. They could be our collective connection to all beings. But it's void of any of this ego that drives our normal day-to-day -day actions. And I recommend using the word help. The Lotus Sutra, one of the most seminal texts in Mahayana Buddhism, stresses the importance of upaya, or skillful means. Somebody's drowning, you throw them a life preserver, you don't throw them a Bible. Maybe you give them an oar, and you certainly don't throw them a sutra. So we have to use our intelligence as doctors, which is a very important central metaphor in Buddhism, the Buddha being a fantastic physician of sorts, where we can identify some where somebody is, what they need, and then offer them that as best we can. Now, sometimes that might be offering somebody the Buddha Dharma. Other times, it's not. It might just be offering somebody a shoulder to cry on, it might be offering a, a somewhat hungry some bread. But our goal, when we say to save, leads us down a treacher treacherous road, I believe. Because it immediately challenges this notion of we. Instead, it kind of props up this, this ego of sorts, because we're thinking I as an individual separate from all individuals have some sort of insight that I, uh, I'm gracing the world with as opposed to helping. Where we are right now in a crisis in America, and one might argue in the world, and the world is always in a state of crisis. It's just those people who are privileged don't always see it. I want to spend a moment talking about the, the last word in all, uh, well, the first three vows. We vow to help them all. You can't have all without the parts. You see people posting a lot on social, uh, social media, all lives matter. Well, we can't have all unless we have all the subcategories, all the parts of it, unless they all matter as, well, they matter as well. And so when we say all lives matter as opposed as a refute to something like black, to the movement of Black Lives Matter, it's obviously an intentional snub, but I also think it's losing sight of what it means to be all. We vow to commit ourselves to helping all beings, tall, short, bald, hairy, brown, white, black, all beings. An important underscoring of that is our, our duties as people who take the Bodhisattva vow seriously does not just commit us to helping humans. It's about a commitment to our ecosystem, to the earth, to all beings on it, all animals. How do we do violence? Through our ignorance, when we're unaware, do we stop uh, at the market uh, or whatever is closest on the way home and, and get a hamburger? And how does that contribute? Or how does getting a, a veggie burger contribute perhaps to the suffering of beings around us? In Buddhism, the the vows that we make and the precepts that we take are not handed down from some authority. I think they're grounded in the very practical question, which is, does this cause suffering? 
if what we do is causing suffering, then we shouldn't do that. We want to minimize the amount of hurt and pain that we, we, um, we produce inside the world. We vow to help them all. It's a challenge. Every moment, due to its impermanent nature, is brand new, which gives us a brand new opportunity to practice this amazing thing called the Buddha Dharma. But the Buddha Dharma manifests in so many different ways, not just in seated meditation, not just in sutra recitation or prostrations. Rather, it's us with open arms in the marketplace. And how do we engage the world around us? As a layman, I don't wear robes. The only time I wear them is when I'm seated in front of the Zoom sessions because my day-to-day -day life requires that I wear ordinary clothes especially now that I'm home because of this pandemic. So how do we engage the world causing as little violence and as little pain and suffering and trying to help all of those beings? And that's a big question mark. I'm not answering it. We have to encounter each moment as supplely, as honestly, and try to be as compassionate and patient as, as possible. So this way we can help all of those beings who need them, need help. Because as Avalokiteshvara, Kuan Yin, Kuan Samboso are all embodiments of the Bodhisattva of compassion who hears the world's cries. That's not some abstract being, but rather our practice when we commit ourselves moment after moment to easing the suffering of the world. Thank you.